evening, everybody. I'm so sorry to keep you all waiting. Um, we unfortunately have a little bit of a technical problem, so we're not going to be able to show the images tonight, but we're going to have a great conversation. And I want to start by saying that this is a very uh, both exciting time at China Institute and an important time. It's exciting because we're just um, launching into a real, really important expansion um, stage. And uh, in about six months' time, we're going to have a proper auditorium in the corner back there. It's, it's 5,000 new square feet over there. So we won't be sitting in this uh, temporary space. So thank you for bearing with us um, with the temporary uh, seating. And um, why is it an important time? It's an important time because obviously we all know this is a very stressful time for U.S. China relations. And uh, we feel that China Institute's mission is more important than ever. Our mission is to uh, inform people about China, about the real China of today, and we do that through, we have a school of Chinese studies, we have a gallery, and we also do lots of public programming in arts and culture and business and technology. So um, we feel that uh, this kind of uh, in-depth communication, especially with voices from China, is incredibly important so that we here in the States get a bit of clearer picture of what's actually going on in China. So thank you for coming. I also see we've got a number of our uh, wonderful trustees here tonight, so I want to thank Yvonne Wong for being here, thank Ingrid Bernberg, and I know Sophia Shang is here, we're the, back there. Thank you all so much for your incredible support and being um, cheerleaders for the China Institute family. We hope that you will all join China Institute, um, so please there are membership forms out. Um, <coughs> so uh, I don't want to talk any longer, I want to introduce our wonderful, wonderful panel. <coughs> Um, to say that uh, Lee Song Song is obviously uh, just a giant in the field of contemporary uh, contemporary art. And um, he grew up during the Cultural Revolution, so he comes from that generation. And he then attended the Central Academy of Fine Arts in 1990s and graduated in 1996. Um, he has, his work has been shown all over the world and his works are collected in museums all over the world. Um, he deals a lot with history and memory, and you'll hear him talk about that tonight with Michelle, who is our moderator. And Michelle is also a wonderful China art expert. Uh, she's a senior curator of modern and contemporary art at Asia Society Museum, and before that was at Hunter College Art Galleries. And she's also worked at Tsai Chow Studio. She knows the art world incredibly well, knows the artist very well, and, and his work. Um, and so we're very grateful for that. And I also wanted to give a shout out to the Case Gallery and um, Joe Baptista. Thank you so much for, they had an amazingly successful opening for Lee Song Song's new show um, last night. And we're just delighted that you, thank you so much for bringing this great artist to us here so we can share your thoughts with our audience. And we look forward to lots more um, collaborations in the future. It's really, really great. Um, thirdly, I will say that our translator is equally a star. So um, Vincent Cheng is, um, he has translated for just about every, and interpreted for just about every Chinese artist, every Chinese actor, every Chinese filmmaker, all kinds of performers that you've ever heard of. So um, he's really, truly the best translator, best interpreter in New York as possibly, in America, probably in America. So we're really delighted that he was able to jump in and join us tonight. So please come on up and we'll have a great conversation. Um, and stay afterwards, please, we'll have a reception afterwards, so please join us. <coughs> Yeah. 
on to receive your DFA at Kafa. And so, you know, what led you um, so early on to focus on um, an artistic practice? So good evening, and I would like to first apologize for the fact that we are actually experiencing some technical difficulties and the fact that I actually, as an artist, need to talk about my work without the painting behind me. It's <laughs> something very, very challenging, but at the same time, is that unfortunately the computer didn't uh, really uh, work with us tonight. So uh, our apologies. Uh, <laughs> Anything that uh, I feel less bad about this particular situation is that the computer actually wasn't uh, designed or made by Chinese people. <laughs> So it was born in 1973, actually, ironically, probably the people here know more about that part of the Chinese history because that's the end of the Cultural Revolution. So in terms of the crucial moments in my childhood, actually I didn't have a lot of memory uh, when Mao Zedong passed away. I don't know whether or not it's because I was too young to actually uh, register that, or my parents were trying to protect me so that I wouldn't be too sad. So definitely growing up, I'm experiencing, observing, and witnessing dramatic transformations in China. And these changes not only is materialistically speaking, but also spiritually speaking, emotionally speaking, psychologically speaking. So when I was in elementary schools, I remember that uh, I used to watch a lot of U.S. television shows because that was the opening uh, period uh, between the China and the U.S. at the time. <coughs> agents that uh, working uh, in different missions and then one of they all have different tricks and capacities and special skills and one of which is actually this flying dagger thrower so uh, a lot of us are trying to 
somehow imitate that particular skills and behaviors and soon maybe because of this that this show was not shown in China anymore. <laughs> 
因为因为有很多的东西你会呃，但是我我当时我不会意识到这会改变我什么，但是这个这个会深植在你的这个记忆和这个呃，或者也会影响你的思想方法。And soon after Chiang Kai Bangar, of course, uh, a tragedy then happens uh, happened in China, and I think, in terms of in its history, it plays a very important role, uh, collectively speaking, but also personally speaking, it really had a huge impact on me as someone who was at the age of 16 experiencing this firsthand, and definitely uh, there's a sense of uh, transformation out of disillusion. Uh, that uh, because of this particular event, we, in a way, can you can say that it's very uh, destructive in a way that uh, you need to rethink everything that you used to believe in and used to actually hold dear. So that is definitely something that is very, a turning point uh, as as an individual because of this particular event. And do you think, um, kind of experiencing that transition from this extreme? openness and optimism from the 80s to a more dark period where, you know, much of the avant-garde went underground in the 90s, um, and, you know, and having that influence of Lu Xiaobong, whose work has, it had, you know, there are elements of um, social critique um, and thinking about kind of coming of age and beginning your mature practice kind of in, um, you know, in the midst of this cynical realist period in the 90s. Do you think that has shaped, that shaped your formative practice? Um, and, you know, I think a lot of your work does have a psychological charge to it. And so I'm wondering if that is um, more of an internal influence or kind of more of an external kind of uh, from the effects of what's going on societally or a combination.
。然后是，然后我们再回去说刚才一开始说的，就是那个，就是在这个二十年代末到九十年代初，然后呃，在经历了所谓的中国当时有一个有一个急刹车一样的关闭。那这个时候对文化上有什么影响呢？是实际上，如果我去回忆的时候，我回想的时候，那个时候对文化和艺术。呃，是一个就是，就还算是很好的一个时间，不能再好，因为其实还是比较自由的，而且是，而且甚至是你有一个，有有时候我觉得这种文化的讨论和这个，呃，恰恰是需要有一个明确的这个对手，就是你有一个明确的一个一个反对的方向，而不是说，而呃，可能在那之前，比如八十年代，的确是大家都好像在一种非常乐观的、开放的这样一种态度下，呃。好像生长也很快，但是，呃，反而到了九十年代，你发现哦，实际上，呃，根本没有解决那呃那些思想上的问题，这一切来得太快了。那我们还需要、呃、做很多事情。So to me, I think ironically, I really think that、uh, after this sudden shutdown、uh, from the 80s to the 90s, it actually gave a fertile ground for a lot of artists like myself、uh, to really do something. Uh, more freely and to express ourselves in such a way that uh, can be、um, a little bit、uh, uncensored. In such a way that in the past you tend to think that since everything's so open in the eighties, everyone's so optimistic, and we have these ideal dreams that, that we are pursuing, and suddenly we realize that、uh, these are just dreams that cannot never be fulfilled. They're an ideal in terms of ideology issues and still. So for us is to think about、uh, now everything suddenly shut down. We had this com common enemy somehow to really reflect on the previous decade, the previous era, and think about how we want to find solutions and to find a, a different way to express ourselves as an artist. Thank you so much for that. I think you know, thinking about this internalization of kind of this. Especially thinking about the uniqueness of contemporary or modern Chinese history,、um, and artists of your generation, I feel whether it's kind of、uh, this internal processing or deconstruction of the experiences that you have gone through,、um, you know, kind of echoes in the collective. Conscience or in the collective memory, and I feel like it's more reflective of the, of a collective experience or thinking about collective memory. And I wonder, with this younger generation that perhaps is not aware of these recent past histories and these traumas,、um, you know, their work is very different, and it's much more、um, individualized, I think, and kind of self-reflective. In a way, even though you say that what you're creating is more internal, I feel like it's more reflective of、um, a more societal trauma or, or sensitivity. And so I wonder if you, from your perspective as an artist and living in China and being very active in the art scene, see a divide between you know artists of your generation and, and these younger artists that are coming up. 那对于在时代呀，是你的时代还在呃文革之后出生这些时代，你会不会觉得说，可能这些现在时代的艺术家，他们重视的，他们他们关注的焦点，可能会比较有关于自己个人自自啊、呃，就是他们个人他私人这样的观点去创作。但是呢，上个时代的创作感觉上是因为这些特殊的当中当代历史的一些影响，他们可能就像你说的，就是有内在的一些心灵的一些创伤，可能是。虽然说是个人式的，但是是一个集体的一个群大把大呃大家都有共同的一个这个社会的记忆或国家的记忆。那你会觉得看到有这样一个对垒，就是从年轻时代到现在的时代，是不是有从这样子集体主义的这样子的影响观点去做画或者做创作？那到现在是这个时代是比较注重于个人、私人的。就别人我不知道，就是说这个艺术家就比较比较这个自私。<笑> so I don't know that other people are artists, but I do think that as an artist myself, and 
I can see that how artists can be very, very selfish. So in terms of describing artists as someone who is part of this particular collectivistic way of thinking and doing and expressing themselves, uh, to me, I don't think they go together. It's almost like an oxymoron. So I do think that it has very much to do, you know, cost generation when speaking, it's how we react to power. And I do think that for the older generations, that there's a certain way for you to actually possess that type of power. Uh, and whereas for the younger generation, that that kind of power source uh, has have evolved uh, into something very different and could be about money or the combination of money with power and how you define what what does it mean to be powerful? How, what does it mean to be resourceful? So I do think that's uh, how I see how these two generations differ. And I guess, you know, to come back to your own work, um, and you know, you have a show that just opened last night at Pace um, with your most recent body of work. I mean, if you could maybe talk a little bit about this most recent body of work and the direction that you see your work going, you know, now. So, you know, when audiences can go to see the work, they will have that in mind. So of course I would like you to have the opportunity to see my show at Pace. Uh, I do think that you know, each one of us, when we see the things, we might have our own interpretation. So I can only share with you how I understand this particular show and collections that I am showing at Pace. Uh, 
know about. Yeah. So there are 11 paintings uh, currently on display at Pace, and the 11 of them now, it's not to say that all 11 of them are completely different. There's still some similarity or a common theme, but at the same time is that they are not one coherent, almost like a series that I put together. So you can still see that they, they are different uh, concepts, they are different methods, and they are different ways of expressing uh, myself as an artist. And there's no narrative logic to it. It's just something that being put together in a thoughtful way, but randomly. So for the past two, three years, I think very much uh, I was in a, a stage of trying to think about painting. It's not so much about what you see, but the, the process itself, the, the, process, the mythology, the, the, the way of putting together this particular painting. Uh, so in terms of this the way I paint uh, as an artist, it's not to actually continue to draw a painting in its entirety. What I do is I will divide the canvas into different small grids and I will do it one by one, grid by grid, and then in combination you see the final result at the end. And the reason why I do that is because I really want to somehow present an image or present a process that people will not say that I am an artist. I'm sorry, I'm a painter. So for me, instead of being seen as a painter, when I start to create a narrative with this particular canvas in its entirety, I would better to do it just with this particular grid and would look at it and think of it almost as if that all I'm doing is to actually expressing through the labor of love and to somehow the act of painting itself is something that I'm focusing on without thinking about how this will turn out in terms of as a whole uh, at the end. So to me that is almost like a, a self-discipline, uh, intense labor that I, I put myself through to somehow uh, gain some pleasure out of the experience. So what I do, how I work, is that I will work almost every day, uh, except for one day off per week. And uh, this to me is almost like the constant labor that I will uh, put myself through because I don't want to really see myself as someone that I am commission myself or I hire myself as a labor to do something. This is something that I want to do. So, uh, so 
要求，有一个很重要的就是他是不是他对我来说他是不是合理的，然后我我我要用用一个什么样的一个道理把它给连贯起来，这样才能让这个所谓的我的这个工作继续下去。So to continue this work, this type of、uh, labor intensive work is for me to look at this particular grid. And then start thinking about whether or not this is going to make sense or will be logical for me to somehow then the next piece have its connection with this particular grid, and then one by one, hopefully at the end you will have this、uh, at least、uh, something that makes sense, something that's logical, and that particular internal logic will be defined by myself. This this process is. So it's a very ruthless、uh, process. And maybe because I'm very passionate about a lot of things, and this is somehow something that will calm me down, so that I will、uh, keep myself in check、uh, without being too robust with my emotions. What does it mean? Sounds like a very rigorous and disciplined. Very well in this current body of work.、Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that our audience members have many questions for you because we went over so many topics.、Um, <coughs> they might have some.、Uh, do we have questions? Yes. Still the mic. Questions. Can you introduce yourself first and then ask me questions? Thank you.、Uh, Manny Ramos, member.、Um, Hold the microphone closer.、Um, I like art, and I'm trying to understand your particular style. If I am, if I'm understanding, your style is non-figurative, and you said that、uh, part of your intention is for the、uh, viewer to look at the at the painting and not be concerned about. Message or something of the sort、um, is part of your technique using thick brush strokes. 他说，呃、uh, ，感觉上好像你自己定定义自己的画风是有时候比较偏具象的方式去做表现表现。那他想了解说是也提到说，你可能想让观众给自己要有自己的解读，自己的诠释。那你们说讲到那自己最好，呃，就、就是作画的风格是不是就是用，呃，就是所有的作品里面的唯一的完全的一个同样的东西，就是你的，这个作品的画风就是用厚涂的颜料这样方式去把，不管是什么，样的作品或主题，它表现出来，对它，嗯，这个特别有意思，说，呃，也许是。I think you might be right, but I do have some pieces that I don't use thick paint, and、uh, so. But in general speaking, yes, that will be a common theme and technique. Sometimes, uh, is, uh, uh, just talking about this color of paint, uh, actually, it's not necessarily to make it look like. 我我我猜啊，我我现在想，因为有时候我自己做的事你得回去想一想。呃，我猜我刚开始是是是觉得这样这样用笔很舒服，它能给你一个一个一个,一个好像一个有弹性的这样一种感觉，让你有一点享受这个过程，就跟有点像厨师似的，是吧 ？So in terms of the thickness of pigment. Uh, I do think that、uh, it is something to do with the textures and the brush strokes.、Uh, to me, it's just so soothing.、Uh, this type of thick stickiness—it's almost like you are a chef and you're cooking, and that just gives you that type of haptic,、uh, tactile pleasure out of the process. But this is very fleeting. This type of enjoyment and satisfaction. So I think later I have done a lot of work, and I also. 是需要它有一些呃更多的一些可能性和给我的那个不同的一些反馈，因为我非常依赖于我在工作的过程中这个就是这个现现在出现的东西
给我的反馈，然后来来来来，让我知道下一步怎么做。So I do think that moving on with this particular technique has a lot to do with how I react to the creation grid by grid that uh, I put together, and it's very much about the feedback I can receive from using this thick paint. Somehow I can get a lot of feedback when I look at what I have done and then think about what I'm going to do next, and that type of uh, connections and relationship with thick paints it's give me a lot of information, a lot of feedback, and that uh, make my process possible. 但是后来我觉得也也也有一些问题，就是说你在你在判断的时候，你还是总是说想让它变得更好。呃，那我觉得这个也我，所以我慢慢的我试图让它，我不去管更多的它的呃给我的回馈，但是我要一定要知道我我我这样做，呃，我只是要这样做，按照这个逻辑做完了以后。And then I move on to the third phase of this particular process using thick paint. Is I realized that just by listening to the feedback, sometimes it's very, very uh, limiting and, and it's very restrictive. So for me, it's to then think about it's not so much about uh, what's going to happen next through the feedback. It's to start thinking about if I have a one uh, coherent and constant logic with my painting and I would just do it without second guessing myself, without listening too much of the feedback and then hopefully at the end the, the work itself will have that internal logic that I have been trying to uh, somehow adhere to. So, I think that the So the, uh, I do think that for artists, uh, we are lonely people, uh, especially the act of painting. It's a very, very lonely process, so sometimes that uh, even though I listen to music, but most of the time I would talk to myself uh, during the process of painting, and I would you know, joke about the things, I mean, why are you painting something so stupid, <laughs> better, so I actually would talk to myself and having that kind of dialogue with myself. Yeah. Uh... 上个月我碰巧看了一个网球比赛，是那个在北京那个一个，然后我的票呃很近，所以我能看到 Tim， 我发现他打球的时候一直在说话，我觉得神经病啊！然后我一想，好像我也差不多。<笑><笑> So recently, I actually had a chance to see a, a tennis tournament in Beijing, and I had this course I see. And then I, the player, I was looking at this player, the player is like keep talking to himself as he was playing. So I thought, what a crazy guy. And then I realized that that's exactly what I do when I paint. <laughs> More questions? Yeah. Did you want to ask? So, 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 the last part of your painting, I think everybody don't understand. He, when he says thick paint, it's not just a little bit. He's talking about four or five inches thick. It's major. Okay? So, what's the thickest? <laughs> 那我觉得我太成功了，这样就是 too successful， 就是我没有用，我没有用那么厚的颜色，但是给人带来了这么厚的效果，这个在这个，这是在经济上是很成功的。I think that that you might exaggerate the the actual thickness, but if I can use certain amount of paint and make you feel as if that it's thicker than it actually is, then I'm doing a very, very good job. Actually, if it's a little bit, it's not too thick, but it's not too thick. 
地心引力的东西。<笑> so even though it looks very very thick, but physically,、uh, there's certain limitation because、uh, there's something called gravity. <笑>所以我有好多画，有有这样的画，就颜色掉下来。So I don't mean he is actually the paint actually fall off the canvas because of gravity. Questions? Yes. This this gentleman who was asking first. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself first? Oh, my name is Juan Puntes, and I happen to run a space called White Box. And in 2007, I had the honor to have one of three of your paintings in Moscow. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. With every issue being so, so I've been a student of your work, and I like it very much. Thank you. But I would like、uh, perhaps the audience to be interested in knowing because I am a retired painter and I studied history of painting, east and west. I studied east and west. And、um, I would like to know if you can speak to the audience about your influences, who in the West you have looked at. I think Nicolas de Stael is probably somebody. I mean, since we all have origins and inspirations, could you share? So there are so many of them, and I do think that、uh, when you say that、uh, you're influenced by something or someone, and I do think that everything you have heard and learned and read have a huge impact on you. But I can give you some examples of not so much of that this particular person influences but the painting, but there's some interesting connection between that. 呃，我记得我上高中这个一年级的时候，我们有我们要画一个写生，画一个植物。So I remember that、um, when I was in high school, in one year that we need to do a some type of、uh, sketch of this particular plant. 然后我们那个老师呢，是他也是其实比我大不了多少岁，他应该也是像刘晓东的同学啊，他他也就是刚刚大学毕业就到高中教课，他那个。So at the time, my teacher at the time,、um, he wasn't that many years my senior,、uh, almost like a civil age of Liu Xiaodong, and these are very very eager. Painters,、uh, recent graduates, and then they will,、uh, they will teach these high schoolers, and then he really thought that we were so wild and untamed with our approach to painting this particular plant, and then、uh, he was tr trying to look for some quiet quality to this particular still life that we were sketching. Then he went to the art gallery to buy a book. 但是我后来想起来，就非常奇怪，因为图书馆里可以借到很多关于安静的植物的写生的书，比如中国的古代的绘画就有很多。结果他借了一本《Lucian Free》<笑>。So、uh, he went to the library trying to show us、uh, an example through these books that he was looking for, and it's so interesting that there are so many still life examples that I, he can. Could have find or could have,、uh, could have found or could have looked for、uh, from the Ch- Eastern or the Chinese tradition because we do have landscape painting with a lot of、uh, plants or、uh, vegetation in it. But instead, that、uh, he picked up a book by a Western artist by the name of Lucian Croix. Yeah. Then he found a book by a Western artist. 他主要是画人的，他就找了一张他的画人，他其实没有一张画，一个花儿
就是让其加的一个页，说你们只许看这页，别的不许看。呃，就顺便说一句，因为那个那个图书，那个书是只能借给老师，借给学生的。So the book is actually can be、uh, on loan for professor or teachers, not students. And I think that at the time the teachers actually,、uh, even though the artist itself is famous for portrait,、uh, portraits of、um, figures, and, and、um, but he flipped through the pages and found this particular page with plant in it. So he bookmarked it and then asked us to only look at this particular page without looking at other pages. <laughs> and he left, and then we proceeded to look for other pages and other books. <laughs> 就是我想想说，这是一个一个呃，我我当时我记得很，就是说很哎呃很受影响的一个例子，因为呃这和学学生的一些作业很相近，因为他的他的画大多是写生，就是呃因为我们在上学的时候画了很多写生。So this is different something that.、Uh, Make a huge impression on me.、Uh, to think about this idea of appropriation, the idea of influences, and then because a lot of time, what we do is to to do these sketches, and then in terms of what kind of inspiration we、uh, get from it, has really to do with our、uh, the the teachers and the interactions that we have with him or her. Uh, now, you were uh, 前几天我去呃、uh, Matt 去看了。So I also visited Matt、uh, during this trip, and then I saw the collections of the 17th century Dutch paintings, and then three of them, the Rembrandt's works, they've been put together. So you know, I have seen the original works、uh, many, many times through my drama and travels. I have experienced then the opportunity to see these original works, and I do think that、uh, looking at them, I confirm、uh, my belief that.、Uh, At that time, Rembrandt is definitely one of the masters and、uh, a great painter at the time. 呃，对，所以这就是我举的例子，说因为他问我是什么对呃会有影响。但是我另外又想说，如果你要工作的话，你最好把这些你喜欢的都给忘了。So that will be another example of what will be something that have a huge impact on me. But at the same time, I do have to say that. In order for you to be an artist or a painter, you can have influence from other people. But when you paint, you need to leave that behind and find your own voice. So I'm going to steal the microphone for a second and ask a question, if I may.、Um, so I wanted to ask a question about history and memory.、Um, there are a lot of people who say that China has had. Thirty or forty years of rapid development and big skyscrapers and modernization and going crazy,、um, but that there's there's still a kind of a quest for you know what is China? Where is China's soul? What is China's soul? And it seems like you know China has such a hard time with memory and with history. There's so many things that cannot be talked about that families don't talk about. They don't talk about June Fourth. They don't talk about the Cultural Revolution. They don't talk about The great leap forward, all these things, and I feel a sense of sadness in many of your paintings, and a sense of sorry, and a sense of loss. And I wonder if you could just talk about that a little bit. Talk about what you see in society in terms of memory, and how that plays into your work.
看这个在中国的这个一般好像是七点半以后晚上啊八点钟开始吧，就是就是那个电视台也会放电视剧。So uh, around seven thirty eight o'clock in China, if you turn on TV, you will see those prime time shows currently aired in China. 但是呢，的确有很多人看，尤其是我想，我猜啊，可能是呃上了岁数的人看，可能呃，因为他们生活很稳定，他们那个时候吃完饭可能会看一些电视剧。这个很多电视剧，呃，我想我我猜大多数是关于历史题材的。那你如果说中国人不重视历史的话，那就不对了，他是那么重视。So uh, even though that I don't watch those shows, I do know that the viewership of these shows are really, really high, and most of them they are from the older generations because they have stable jobs, and then they will watch these shows after they finish dinner. So uh, I do think that uh, most of these shows, if you look at them, you will know that these are all period piece historical drama that are so popular right now in China. So I do think that it, you cannot really say that the people don't have any type of uh, famil familiarity or any type of uh, uh, they, they, they are drawn to historical materials or historical uh, dramas and such as those TV shows. So of course the, 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 the shows of our Usually, it's about either the histories, the sign, the sign of China, uh, Japanese war, or the the civil wars, or what we call it, the revolution. If you look at the Japan war, if you believe it, then today Japan is not existent. If you watch this show, if you truly believe what's being depicted in the in, in the TV series, then Japan would have been in existence if that were to be the truth. 所以我这也是我特别这个困扰我的一个事情，就是我们为什么呃总是不能够直面这个事情，所就是我们所说的是呃历史，因为如如果从呃历史的专业角度来讲，那的确是有呃有有描述的历史和所谓的史实这样一直有这样的争论，因为历史总是记录下来的，我们我们我们要从记录，从呃各种考古。也许就没有所谓的真正的历史，但是大约也得说实话吧。So this is something I am very troubled by because I do think that even though we're watching these shows, but if you think about this seriously, um, of course there's always been a debate and about what does it mean to have history and whether or not that you have this grand narrative that is this uniform one history or that there are multiple interpretations of certain historical facts, but at the same time that there, even though that there are certain rooms or interpretations and variations of what represent as facts or historical facts, uh, there's still some truth to it on some level, and uh, it, I think it's a huge problem right now that uh, uh, a lot of uh, people in China, they don't really talk about uh, history in such a direct way and then trying to really look for, even though might not be that one true historical grand narrative, but at least uh, to, there's some authenticity, there's some ver ver uh, ver ver veracity and some truth to it. Uh, 
和更方便的实施他的理想，他的这，而而可能要加强这些控制，但是也许付出的代价会比他得到的成果要要多，而且也许并不是立刻就能显现，也许是一个隐藏的这个损害。So these type of personality issues might be the the cause that hasn't been factored in when. Ruler, uh, rulers, when they are thinking about ruling uh, a country, ruling a state, is to think about what would be the most cost-effective way to control the things and to actual control people so that they can realize these ideals that we want to pursue as a nation without taking into consideration the human cause, including the cause of these type of personality issues or the impact it has on human psyche. So I do have to defend myself in terms of uh, in this particular show and pace. There is an element of a landscape painting, and this is a painting within a painting called Tempest, and this is a depiction, uh, recreation, re-rendering of a very very famous landscape painting in the background, the top, uh, top corners that you will see that painting being re-rendered. It's not that I can't paint like this landscape painting. But I should also say that Chinese culture has a long tradition of landscape painting. So of course, uh, Chinese painting has this long tradition of landscape painting. But I think it's interesting that the thing that is interesting is that the Chinese culture has a long tradition of landscape painting. 怎么说？这这可我再简单说，因为太太太大的话题，就是说，他们实际上是在用这个这个风景画的这样的一种视觉形式来来归纳他们的这个笔法。So I do think that this is such a broad topic. I'm just going to make it quick and dirty. And I think that a lot of painters in the past day using landscape painting as a way to somehow Almost like a summation or a conclusion of their uh, their, their techniques, that their strokes that they want to showcase, and they they present them through landscape painting. Hmm. Uh, 
几位画家、风景画家的展览。So last year I was the, at the shows that are being exhibited in the Beijing Palace Museum、uh, of the、uh, very famous paintings, landscape paintings from Qing Dynasty. 就我看完那个展览，我的一个一个我自己的结呃印象，一个感觉就是，到清代的时候，呃，因为风景画在我这我觉得可能是在宋代到元，差不多离现在有八百年左右的这段时间达到了非常高的高度，但是到了清代的时候，就就这个这个走向一个没落。但是我我的我认为的原因就是他们把这个游戏玩的太过分了。<laughs> so after watching these paintings from Qing Dynasty,、uh, my own interpretation of that is that actually the the golden days or golden years or golden dynasty of、uh, Chinese landscape painting was actually、um, 800 years ago from the Song Dynasty to the Yuan Dynasty. I do think that、uh, it's not as good、uh, as a tradition, or that it has somehow deteriorated、uh, when. It went all the way to the Qing Dynasty, and one of the reasons I think I suspect is that because they are playing this game too hard, and they are being,、uh, yes, they just they're too too much adhere to what the logic of why they are doing this, and then、um, that somehow ruin it. This is a bit like, I just suddenly thought of it. Maybe not appropriate. Maybe with the Qing Dynasty's time, the social environment is related to the Qing is a 外族统治，所以他对这个社会的管控，尤其是对于读书人的管控是非常严格的。所以可能你有很多很多工作，呃，最好不要和社会现实发生太多的联系。所以，那大家就是都在玩一个游戏，那这个游戏的规则越定越窄，这个游戏的前途也越来越。So I think that just a narrowing of this particular practice, just because that, you know, in a way you can think think about Qing Dynasty is actually ruled by Nan Han, which is by Qi,、um, uh, a different、uh, called foreigners、uh, that somehow rule the the Middle Land, and so I do think that because of that, there's a very very strict limitations and control of what's being studied and what's being painted, and because of that. Uh, in order for you to survive, somehow you need to know the game, to play the game, and then that that、uh, there's a slowly but gradually tightening of that particular game and how you should play it, and that's why I do see this particular、uh, deterioration of a、uh, school of painting called the landscape painting in Qing Dynasty. I think、uh, unfortunately we've run out of time.、Um, we have a reception for everybody, and you know if you have other questions, then there are. Uh, you know, just that during the reception, but please join me in thanking Lee Song. I just wanted to say also a big thank you、um, to Pace Gallery and to Lee Song and Michelle Yu and Vincent. And you can see if this guy knows, he's learned about history tonight, he learned about memory tonight, and he learned about art. So I think we accomplished everything we set out to do, even without the images behind us. So thank you so much.